Hey guys, Nary here from Drinkwing Gaming, somebody on Twitter, The Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming at you to the Let's Play episode of Dawn Chorus, Miko's Path. Yes, I know, we finished up Toral's Path, but it's time to continue that cute little wolf's path and see just how day two works out for us. But anyway guys, let's jump right back into it, shall we? Please sit back and enjoy. Alarm Shan has been engaged, and here we go. <clears throat> so, let's go back a little bit. By the way, why doesn't he sit with the rest of the faculty? Oh, he could, but the age difference between him and the professors is greater than between him and me. They don't have many topics in common, so they'd just be exchanging pleasantries the whole time. How old is he? I thought he's around 35 or something? 30 this year. Oh, okay, I didn't expect that. So, you slept well? Oh no, I barely got any sleep. <laughs> Some matcha this morning lifted me up, otherwise I'd be barely alive now. I slept great, thank you. My bed was lovely. I really didn't want to leave it this morning. Hey, guys! Damn, I slept like shit. Puh. <laughs> it's like we're not the only ones. <laughs> what did I miss? What? Did I miss something? Not much. Don't worry. Hello there. Morning. <laughs> How about you, Travis? No, oh, I slept great. Thank you. The beds here are great, and I was so tired after the ride that even an airstrike wouldn't wake me up. Oh. God, why they had to? Uh, why they had to pitch an airstrikes, especially now? <laughs> uh, so bad. Guys, please. Uh, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna put that link. To that, uh, uh, that uh, uh, Ukrainian uh, uh, bundle again. I'm gonna put that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put that in all my videos till this shit is over. All right. Anyway, <laughs> lucky you. Why, you had problems sleeping? I had a bit too much on my mind. Ah, uh, not me. I slept like a log. The beds here are great. Do you have a double or a single one in your room? Double. But I didn't sleep there. I moved to Miko's room for now. Oh, that's great. I mean, it's nice you spent the night with a friend. But you already have your key, right? Yeah, found it yesterday evening. Where was it? Uh, I hope nobody would ask. This is embarrassing. I had it in my camera bag. But anyway, I hope the food will be here soon. I'm starving. But what do you think we'll get? No, oh, I hope they serve croissants. I barely buy them for myself, but I hunt for them every time I'm staying at a hotel. It's almost a tradition for me at this point. You know what's good, guys? It's a lightly warmed honey butter croissant with the honey butter just dripping off. It is incredible. Pancaker again would be nice, but I doubt we'll get the same thing two days in a row. I bet it's on breakfast cereal. What else would the bowls be here for? Everyone seems to be. Everyone seems to like talking about the food. After all, that's one thing that connects us all. People from all the backgrounds of every class, every age, and every profession. Students and professors, billionaires and factory workers, best friends and complete strangers. We'll have to. We all have to and like to eat. In the meantime, a few of us went for a glass of juice or coffee from the espresso machine standing at one of the tables near the entrance. The cafeteria slowly fills with people, but even though it are, it's already past 7 o'clock, there are still some people from our table missing. Good morning. Jorgen walks up to our table, and after the terse greeting sits down next to Bjorn. He looks composed as always, and still has that cold aura he had from most of yesterday. Everyone goes silent, likely wondering about the same thing. Where's Lake? Jorgen already made himself a cup of coffee at the espresso machine. Now he takes a small tasting sip, unaware that all our eyes are on him. <laughs> a little ASMR here. What? Why are you all looking at me like that? How's the how's the coffee? It's coffee. It's always good. If you say so. Where's Lake? He's still in the room. Of course he overslept. Oh, that silly lion. Oh, God, I overslept today, too. I didn't get up to, like, freaking... I woke up at, like, 8.15 and didn't get up to, like, 10. I tried waking him up, but he kept mumbling just one more minute. He's taking a shower now. Should be here in a few minutes. You're gonna see he's more talkative than he was yesterday, at least. Maybe he's warming up to us after all. At that moment, Coach walks into the cafeteria with Professor Arn. Attention, everyone! Sadly, we have to start the day with some bad news. 
Due to the heavy snowfall, the bus won't be able to come here for us, so we have to skip today's trip to the town. No trip to the town? Vigo is really happy for that. I look forward to it, too. Fortunately, we won't miss all the lectures. The university is working hard right now to set everything up for online streaming, and we will watch them from here in the cafeteria. However, only the lectures held in the main lecture hall will be streamed. That's all for now. Breakfast will be served in a minute. As soon as Coach finishes speaking, a hubbub of students' mixed voices fills the room. The panther makes his way towards our table and sits down next to Rune with a sigh. Morning, Devin. Is everything okay? Yeah, thank you. I'd hoped to have a less eventful morning, but everything's fine. So, we're stuck in the guest house? Unfortunately. Only until the afternoon. The snowplow should get here by then. Morning, all. Did I miss something? Morning, late. Quite a lot, actually. Oh, the sleepyhead is finally here. Do I need to remind you that, we, that you were late for lunch yesterday? Besides, breakfast isn't even here yet. This is on cue, the guest house staff enters with a cart of oat with our food. And yes, they have croissants. Each table gets a basket with various kinds of bread, an assortment of jams and pastes, a pitcher of milk, and a bag of corn cereals. There's also a separate dish with sweet pastries and one with brunost, as well as regular coconut cheese and a bowl of fruits. Looks like they don't serve fish in this guest house. Not that I mind, I haven't had any in a long time. I'm not a big fan, I'm not a fan of very sweet breakfast, so I skip the cereal and just make myself a few sandwiches and grab a croissant. Biko grabs a bowl and makes himself some cereal with milk. Since when do you eat sweet breakfasts? I don't really, but we're on a trip. It's okay to treat yourself in a once in a while. Did you ever watch... Did you ever watch Twink Peak? What? What? <laughs> um... Hey, Miko, what have you been watching in your room? <laughs> did you ever watch Twink Peaks? No, never got to it. The main character there said something wise. Every day, give yourself a present. This is my present for today. Right. With the trip to the town canceled, that's probably all we can get. Unless we get something really nice for lunch. Nobody said it has to be just one present. Mm hmm. I'd say it's implicit. But maybe it'll be good for you. You're still skin and bones. Look who's talking. You look like you lost 10 kilograms or more. Yes, but I was on a bit of a chonker, wasn't I? I was on a bit of a... Yes, but I was a bit of a chonker, wasn't I? No, you had a very average build. At first, I didn't think much of it, but looking at him now, Miko is acting oddly cheerful. He's usually much more reserved, even with me. Though, maybe that also changed with time. Miko, is everything alright? Sure, why do you ask? It's nothing, just thought you'd be sadder about the trip. You seem really excited about that. Yeah, but things happen, don't they? Nothing we can do. I nod. It's not exactly a satisfying answer, but I see that I won't get a different, uh, I won't get a different one, and I don't want to prod harder, at least not here. Jorgen! No. Hey, Jorgen, you're not eating anything! A coffee for me is enough. I'll grab an apple or two later. I mean, he is a, a bat. I don't know what kind of bat he is. Is he a fruit bat? Hey, those for Babberhorn are really tasty. I'll take your word for it. I'll away from anything that has rhubarb in it. I wonder if cereal with coffee would taste okay. Yes, it does. Lake. What? Don't. As I'm listening to all the conversations happening around me, a warm feeling arises in my chest. It's been only a day since we arrived, but we already look and act like a group of friends. Even if, even if we all study in different departments, just for the duration of the camp, we can keep together. And it, and it makes me happy. Aw. Ooh. Ooh, what is that? Ooh, that was cool. That was a nice little screen. I stand up and stretch out, groaning lightly. The chairs here definitely weren't designed to watch, weren't designed with watching an hour-long lecture in mind. I spoke with Miko after breakfast, wanting to sit alone for a bit. I haven't had many chances for that since yes, since, since we arrived yesterday. Just a few lone walks through the forest. At the table, I couldn't shake off the feeling that Miko was feigning a good mood. Maybe I should ask him about it once we're alone again. Things started galloping forward ever since we got here, and soon I'll need a moment to pause and wrap my head around them. Ugh. That was good, wasn't it? Although, maybe a bit too informative and technical for a morning lecture. Yeah, I think I can under- I think I understood all of it, but it took some serious effort. At least the previous one was a bit lighter. The next one is a bit- is a bit about gravitational lensing, whatever that is. 
I think I'll skip it. Astrophysics doesn't interest me that much. I think I'll go see it. It could be interesting. Besides, we rarely get an occasion to learn something from outside our field of study in a way that is, th that is this friendly. But now we have a break anyway. What are you going to do now? I'll go back to my room for now. Some rest will be nice. This is interesting. I can smell my neurons burning. I guess I'll go practice the guitar for now or something. That's a weird idea of rest, but whatever works for him, I guess. Might as well go do some jogging or push-ups. Oh, that's a great idea, actually. Thanks. Wait, I was only joking. See you later. <laughs> oh my. How about you? I have something planned, actually. I'm going for a walk and I want to bring something with me. You can tag along if you want. It would be nice to spend some time together. Yeah, hell yeah, let's do it. A walk sounds nice. I could use some fresh air after sitting here for so long. Great. We leave the room alongside other students making our way to the corridor. So, did you learn something from the last lecture? Well, well, not really. <laughs> the, lecture did, the lecture did a good job of explaining everything, but there was so much I didn't know I, I didn't know I doubt I'll remember much of it. Not to say I regret being there. By the way, where are we going? Outside. But first to my room. I need to get a few things. Or you could grab your camera in the meantime if you want. Now that I have my digital camera back, it would be nice to walk around and take some photos of the surroundings. I couldn't go too crazy with the instant camera, especially as I took only one, one film pack with eight, eight photos with me. I'll go get it. How about we meet at the entrance? Hmm, sounds good. Miko enters his room, and I direct my steps to my own. I wonder what he's up to. That sounded a bit mysterious. What you doing, Miko? What are you doing? Plotting. I've been waiting for the wolf for some time now, but there are still no signs of him. He's jacking it. <laughs> Opening the camera bag, I once again go through the lenses and I the lenses I took with me. 50 millimeter f f 1.8 medium focal length, a very bright one, perhaps for perfect for portraits, but that's not its only use. 30 millimeter f 2.8, a wider angle, still rather bright. I'm not a fan of zoom lenses; they're almost always worse than fixed focal length prime lenses, so I didn't take any this time. I was surprised how stark the difference was when I first compared them. What are you doing? Looking up, I see Miko sporting a rather full-looking backpack. Just looking through my lenses, thinking if I should swap any for something else, but no, I'm happy with what I have here. And what do you have in there? You'll see in a short while. Heh. <laughs> Interesting. I leave the guest house after Miko, stepping out into the snow. The view of the valley opens before us, still as breathtaking as the first time. It's a fine afternoon, with only the lightest snow still falling. I take a lungful of arctic air. It's sobering and delicious, carrying the smells of pine, needle, pine needles and glaciers. Follow me. We'll find a good spot. Oh, if you want to take some pictures along the way, just tell me and I'll wait. We're not in a hurry. Sure. It usually doesn't take much time, though. I have to stop for just a moment. Catching up with you won't be a problem. Miko turns around and continues down the path leading to the forest. I follow close behind, looking around for a frame that would catch my interest. And either this place is full of great frames, or I'm so excited and happy that everything looks interesting to me. <laughs> we make our way into the forest, where the trees muffle the whispering wind. The silence here feels like a woolly blanket, almost too heavy to shake off. Miko doesn't seem as downcast as he was at breakfast anymore. Maybe he was just sad that the trip was cancelled. Either way, that's good. I hate seeing him sad. Even if that didn't stop me from just disappearing from his life for three years without a word. I always could have tried to convince myself that it's better for both of us to split this way, but that would be a lie. I was thinking of myself only. Thinking back to it, it all seems hazy and distant. I can barely remember what really happened and why. I know I had a crush on Miko. I don't remember why or when I decided I needed to stop seeing him. I remember that being near him hurt so much I couldn't bear it, and but I don't remember that pain itself. Looking back at it now... It was, a typical I was a, it was a typical teenage gay crush. Back then, I wasn't ready to admit, even to myself, that I might not be straight. Getting a crush on my friend terrified me. But now that I'm older, I feel like we can start a new chapter. Miko, what is it we're looking for? A fallen tree or a stump somewhere quiet. We should find some in no time. Right. That shouldn't be too hard to find in a forest. And surely, after a few more minutes of walking, I noticed a fallen tree lying horizontally on the ground, just a few meters away from the path. How about that one? You have a good eye, Carvin. 
We diverge from the path and head towards the spot I scouted, our paws leaving deep prints in the snow. Perfect. Perfect for what? Let me show you. Yuko takes off his backpack and rests against the fallen tree. He reaches into the bag and takes out a small white box with colorful knobs and buttons. Some kind of an instrument? This is something I got not long before the camp. It's a sampler and sequencer in one box. It's fully portable, so I can take it with me anywhere. Oh, I think I saw this one online a few times. Videos of people jamming with these are popular. It's fun to use and fun to watch. I like going out and playing in nature. It never fails to calm me down and puts me in a good mood. Staying here, up north, far from any towns and people, I started feeling more at peace with the world around me. It's quieter in my head, and my thoughts are clearer, too. Almost as if a veil was lifted from them. The quietness here speaks to me clearer than the city's noise. Veil lifting, the wind speaks to me the tales of the days past. Almost like back at home. It doesn't really remind me of that. It's a different kind of quietness. This one feels like an infinite stillness. I want to try capturing it somehow. Like how you capture the image with your camera. I want to describe this place with music. The sampler has a built-in microphone. I wanted to record the ambient sounds from here and try to make something out of them. Photography and music are very different media, but their aims aren't always far off. They both can weave stories, describe scenes and places, capture emotions. In essence, they both capture or construct worlds. I also wanted to record my own voice humming along with the wind, but since you're here with me, can I record you instead? Sure thing, but you have to tell me exactly what to do. Sure, nothing too hard. I'll record the general ambience first, and then maybe try finding some specific sounds I could use. You can go take photos in the meantime, or stay here with me and talk. I'll stick around. The spot is quite atmospheric. Great. I'll get started then. Miko sits down on the fallen tree, rests the instrument on his knees, and plugs in a small pair of headphones. While the wolf is busy, I walk around, just taking in the atmosphere of this place. I try to muffle my steps, but it's hard to do when the snow is crunching under my paws. When examined up close, everything seems interesting. The lichen, the lichens growing up on the trees, the, r the rhythm of the snow falling, the ever-changing tapestry of clouds above us. Sometimes nature is more beautiful than any animal-created artwork. I take a few pictures before my paws get cold. I put the camera back and stick them into the pockets of my coat. After a minute or less, I walk over to Miko and sit down beside him. How's it going? Good. I recorded some backgrounds and I found a pad sound. And I found a pad sa a pad sound. I like that goes well. I like it goes along well. If it all goes well, I might even finish it today. How about you? I hope you're not getting bored. I feel bad if I took you all the way out here just so you'd walk around bored. No, you know I, you know I don't mind just hanging around. And besides, it's my first walk around here with my digital camera, and I'm, I'm the opposite of bored. This whole camp feels exciting, you know. For many reasons, and the fact that we can sit together again like this is like like that is one of them. By the way, I remember you having just a bit of a just a bit of equipment. How did you get this much? I mean, it must have all been expensive as hell. Hmm. Have you maybe heard of the Manifold Curiosity? I don't recall the name. What's that? It's a game I made the soundtrack for. It was created by a small studio in Hel Helsinki and released there earlier this year. Maybe it wasn't a great hit, but it was a good game. You should check it out if you don't know it. They helped me with getting the instruments, and the pay was good enough so I could buy some more I had some more I wanted. And it's not like I had sunk in money. I bought most of these used, so I can resell them later at the same price, or just a tad cheaper. Wow, I had no idea. I'm sure it's great. Now I definitely have to play the game, or at least find the soundtrack somewhere. I thought you didn't want to put your stuff out there. Isn't that what you told Torolf? Yeah, but this was a bit different. I composed it for the game, so it was a commission work, something not fully mine. Not to say I didn't put effort into it, quite the, quite the contrary. I tried giving them a soundtrack that would complement the game the best, because that's what soundtracks are for. And I think they liked it, because it made its way into the game for release. I see. Leaning back on the tree trunk, I open my maw and catch a few falling snowflakes, melting on my tongue. Suddenly I feel the wolf's weight resting on my shoulder as he leans on me, continuing to fiddle with the synth on his lap. Aww, cuties! I put an arm on his shoulder and snuggle him closer. He's shivering. I don't think it's from the cold. He stays focused on the music, but presses up to me in response. There's something cold in his stare, but as I hold him close, he slowly relaxes. I sit like that, holding him close, while he works on his music. I shield him from the cold wind, blowing relentlessly, and keep him warm. It's good to be here with him. We don't even need to do much. I'm just glad to have him next to me. I'm gonna get a... 
There we go. That's as good a thumbnail right there. Finally, he calms, he calms down completely and leans back on me, putting the instrument down beside him. I snuggle him into me closely, and he goes almost limp in my arms, resting his head on my chest. Time seems to come to a halt, seconds and minutes seeming, seeming completely abstract. All that matters is that the two of us are here, together. Thank you for staying here with me. Oh, I'm going to end it right there. Yes, that's a good place to end it. Oh, thank you. Oh, I was so adorable. These two are so cute. Oh, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that notification bell to the next video. I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.